Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy was smart enough to take the day off. Just because it's a Friday and it's But he regrets weekend. the fact that he's missing Ro Timmy. Hey. My guy Ro Timmy is here. My brother, what's going on? Uh, Walk With Me, your new album is out now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you put out music before, but you said this feels like your first child. Mm. Why is that? Because it's the first one that is actually everything that I wanted to do. Mm. You know, as an artist, you know, trying to figure it out, you listen to different opinions, you try to conform to what everybody else is doing. But then when you finally find who you are, what you are, and you're able to express it like at the to the fullest, then it feels like this, I gotta protect this and raise this the right way. You're leaning into your Nigerian roots, so that's probably what make you feel like this is yeah. the one. Mm -hmm. Was that Afrobeats a natural natural transition, or just something you felt like you had to do now because Afrobeats is popping in your Nigerian? No, no, I think it's, it was a natural thing because I used to do things like that, but at the time it wasn't accepted that way. It was mm -hmm. like, what are you doing, bro? You're not you're American. What, this isn't popping. And I'm and then the first people don't know like the first tour I went on was with Wizkid. Mm. In 2011, so like I saw the wave then, but it was still was just ahead of its time. We're slow over here. Yeah, it was it was crazy because UK ate it up mm -hmm. like crazy in 2011, 2012, and so now I'm in a new situation and 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 new management, and and you're able to express yourself now in in a way that I'm I'm happy about. And you put the album out on Empire. Yeah, yeah, had yeah. to. They do a great job as mm -hmm. far as picking up artists and yeah. making sure that you can really do your own thing. Yeah. With the Empire situation, man, I think a lot of us need to understand that everything is about ownership and partnership. I didn't want to be an artist underneath somebody. I don't want to, I didn't want to do the, the, the traditional label route of waiting for something to happen. I wanted to control my own destiny. Mm -hmm. And so Empire is more of like a conversation. Like, what do you want to do? How do you view it? How can we make it happen? And it's a collaborative effort where any other situation, I kind of have to wait for somebody to tell me, okay, here's a green light for you. And I don't, I don't like that. Is it annoying to you that people always leave comments calling you Dre still yeah, on everything you do? Nah. I'm like, leave him alone. It's about Timmy. <laughs> He's a totally different person. Nah, it's a testament to how dope the show is. You know, like when when you see as an actor, right? You, you the most important thing is you want to make somebody feel something. Right. And you want to make that's how you become a legend, an icon, or whatever the case is. Because when characters can affect the culture like that you've done your job, you know? And so that's why power, man, power put me on a pedestal to be able to have situations like this. It's and, so funny that people be leaving know? the funniest comments. Yeah. Every time you try to post your music, they be like, oh man, stay away from Dre. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> with, now it's different. <laughs> walking yeah, me is a little different. Yeah, you went from, you went to like, you jumped to like top three people they want killed on power. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. it was like, it was, it was the little dude name? Dude. Oh, Tariq. Tariq, <laughs> yeah. you, yeah. and Angela. Oh, but you know yeah. what's hard? I don't think we want Tariq killed because he's he's their son. He I redeemed think we feel, himself last season. But we would feel bit. terrible if they also lost their son after losing their daughter. Right, right. He right. redeemed himself last and season. And he's a kid. So kids do dumb things. Do dumb things. Like, think about the dumb things you did when you were a kid, Rotini. No, for sure, for sure. I did a lot of dumb stuff. But, like, the cool thing about the show is Courtney, the creator of the show, she was, um, she had asked me, like, what do you want to do? At the season three, and they were just about to kill off Lobos, the Lobos character. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we don't have a villain. So she was like, are you ready to take the weight of that? Like, can you handle this work? Because it's going to be a lot. Because it was either be a Ghost 2.0, but mm -hmm. there's already an Amari. You know, you can't duplicate what he's done. So I wanted to create my own lane, and that was Dre. We saw Amari borrow money from 50 yeah. and had to pay him back. Did you ever borrow money? No, I was an artist to 50, so <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. I had to want to make sure you don't owe anything. I made sure he got his money back. Does that scare you, though, when you see how, <laughs> how he treats Young Buck? Young Buck's his artist, too. <laughs> Does that scare you? Like, God damn, if I get on this man's bad side. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm not worried about that at all. Uh, Are you sure? I am positive, bro. The 50, everything 50 does is strategic. You know this. Everything is like to to create controversy or whatever it is to stay relevant and 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 keep his name in your, you know, in your face. So he's just he's brilliant with when he does that. He's so you brilliant. say 50's only trolling to stay relevant? No, not to stay relevant, but to stay like People Conversation, yeah. And I think it's funny for him, too. I think yeah. his sense of humor, he just be laughing. Yeah, he just laughs it off, and like he's like, look, he, there was one time, man, I remember when he was like, look, this we we had just, I had just got there. He was like, yo, so we, you know we don't have the same money that Empire got, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do X, Y, Z, this, 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 and this. He mapped out his whole strategic promotion plan on how to get locked into the Empire mm -hmm. thing and did verbatim everything. And now, so to the point where Empire, when Taraji had to talk about the show, they had to mention power because of 50. So we're getting that $100 million promo marketing 
because of that. And it was just. He know how to stir up waters to catch fish. Yeah, he's brilliant, man. Now, what do you think when you see him getting at people on Instagram, though? Like when you when he's going at Tierra Marie, what is what is going through your mind? I just laugh at it. It's just it's just it's just funny because a lot of things is man, a lot of people start with fifth, and he just knows how to just finish. What about Jackie Long? <laughs> Did you feel bad as a I fellow actor? I didn't see that one. What was that one? He uh, just Jackie Long owed owed him some money as well, and oh, he blasted him. He Did blasted you see him? that? I didn't see that one. I saw you bought a house, by the way. Congratulations yeah, on buying you. your first house with fifty's money. <laughs> <laughs> you better pay it back because he paid it all cash. <laughs> I paid it all cash. Bro. Oh, word. No. Yeah, yeah. Because um, so basically, I was fortunate enough. My dad is a retired investment banker, mm-hmm. so I was able to learn the quality of money early. So, goddamn Nigerian, Nigerian, boy. bro. Like, oh, me, put your money aside. Don't spend me <laughs> on anything now. So, yo, for five seasons, dog, I was living off of my hostings, my bookings, endorsements. I have not spent one dollar of my power money. Wow. Five years. Good for you. I never did. What did you put in, a Roth IRA or something? Yeah, or? yeah, put in, um, yeah, so, but what I did Probably was. a traditional IRA. Yeah. <laughs> but what I did was I found a spot in, uh, in Smyrna, and the first purchase that I did with my power money was to buy that house cash outright, no mortgage, man. And I just felt like to have stability and know that I have a home mm-hmm. for the rest of my life and to cut my, my um expenses into half. Like, it was just the smartest thing. So now you live there? I'm back and forth. Back and forth, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I know you didn't leave this um, tri-state area. Nah, nah, it's too much money out here. <laughs> How do your much. parents feel about your career? Cause you know, African parents don't play. Like, did, were they happy that you went to entertainment or disappointed? Or? It was not. My mom, see, my mom knew, like, I was going to do music. Like, so music, so the funny, the misconception is this. So... People think I've been acting my whole life and mm-hmm. like I've been just doing, you know, I, I just happened to become a musician. No, it's like I've been singing and doing music, playing the violin, the piano, the guitar, everything since I was a kid. Yeah, you was in a group with Jay-Z's nephews. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was in a group with Jay-Z's nephews in high school. So it was, the goal was always to do this. And, and my mom knew, like, she said when she was pregnant with me in the womb, she said she had a dream that Bob Marley had come to her and said, your, your son will help fi- finish my legacy. Mm-hmm. So when I was born, she was my first manager. She had me in the hood in Newark in the studios. Like it was it was crazy. So like it was always music. If but the thing about a Nigerian household is that if you do it, you have to be really good at it. They're not gonna stop until you're really good at something. So she had me in every everything, music theory, everything. Bob Marley came to her in a dream. Yeah, my mom's a spiritual warrior, bro. It said that you were going to finish his legacy. Yeah. What does that mean to you when you hear that? Ah, uh, you know when when people think about Marley, you think obviously good music, but you feel like you know he's he's put his people in a place where he made reggae relevant. He mm-hmm. made he made Jamaicans claim their own. He made he's he's talking about spreading love. So being Nigerian and being an African American and spreading love and and also making Afro beat popular in a way where it's digestible where a white girl in Kentucky can sing the words to love rhythm and mm-hmm. know what she's saying you know completely and so and it's just one of those things where I'm I'm trying to bring uh, like my culture to the forefront like he did I love Afro beats yeah, yeah and man. it's so interesting because I never gravitated towards reggae like I that I know and I really? think that's so odd mm-hmm. that you like Afro beats and you don't like reggae why, why don't you like reggae I don't know I, I mean I like Bob Marley mm-hmm. and I like certain reggae songs but I'm like I don't go crazy when crazy reggae work. comes on you know what I mean but Afro beats has got it like it might be because you're from the, so- the from South, South Carolina no but people like it in South Carolina li- okay I don't know because yeah. I know in Brooklyn yeah, 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 everybody yeah, yeah. listens to reggae everywhere so you can't it's like the largest Population. Here. Population. Do you feel like do you feel like Afrobeat is the new reggae? No, I can see why people say that, but I think Afrobeat's got its own oh, okay. lane. Like, yeah. first of all, you can't help but dance when you hear African drums, bro. Yeah, like, I feel like, like that like, about reggae too. Yeah, that's you can't you help but dance also. But them African drums just do something to your soul because <laughs> the source is the it's the core of where everything started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything started. So, see, how often do you go to Nigeria? Well, I haven't been back since 2011. So you got to make that. I, I know you like, I have to go. I have to and they're going to be so hyped when you come back I there. I know, man. I, I I was planning on going for Memorial Day weekend mm-hmm. during the release of the, of the project. But end of the summer, we definitely going to do something. So what's up with the tour? Uh, so we putting it together now. So we just released the project today. So it's seeing which route and area is putting together, you know. So my, um, my booking agency is making it happen. But by the end of the summer, we'll have it. Now, you, you mentioned it. You said you used to be in a group with Jay-Z's yeah. uh, nephews. Mm-hmm. But Jay-Z used to be a mentor to you back in the day, too, right? Yeah, like, yeah. how? Like, so we put the group together, and we were touring, like, all over, like, Jersey, Connecticut, high schools. And Hove would have us perform all our songs in his living room. And so we would practice all week and then bring it to him. And then 
he'll be like, all right, I don't like that, but change this, da 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 da. And we'll be there for like eight, nine hours. Like he'll choose a day he had nothing to do and break down each person in the group on what you should do, how you should do it, how you should prepare. And I saw him last year at the Rock Nation brunch, and I was, I, I hadn't seen him since I was in high school when we did that. And the fact that he came to me, he was like, man, I've been watching what you're doing. And like this this wave that you on, man, like I'm just so proud of you and you listen to what I said. Two questions. Yeah. Um, did he ever sign, try to sign you to Rock Nation? No, no, I was in school when he had just started that. No, I'm talking about recently. No, no, no. no. He's not. Okay, he and second like question, did he um, ever try, did, he, did you feel like he had favoritism toward his nephews? Of course he of course he was. When he, he was should. critiquing the group. Who was in Oh, it? in the group. Oh, Ramel, Ramel, um, Spanky. <laughs> Rel. Rel. Rel was managing. Yeah, it was all his nephews it for was real. everybody, yeah. Oh, and okay. you. And me. So did you ever feel like you were just not getting a fair <laughs> nah, critique? Nah, 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 nah. I think, I think he was hard on, I think he was more hard on Rel, Ramel. Okay. Cause if, uh, than anything, he was more hard on them. But now nah, he kept it real, man. He was just like, he was just like, that song sucks, or that's great, or that's this. And it was just so honest, and this is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, to do it. So when he spoke, he was just like, let's listen to it. Now let's talk about what you've been going through in real life as yeah. you were doing this I know what album. Jay-Z's living room looked like back then. What year was this? <laughs> this is 2006. This is on State Street? So this is after Hard Knock Life? This is yeah. like, this is JJ. This is JJ. <laughs> Where was the house? It was, uh, shit. In Jersey? No, it was in the city. I State, think it was, um, it was it was close to here, actually. It was oh, close. Okay. Yeah, close was it was school. it luxury? Was it? It was luxury. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was sick. It was Overlooking sick. the city type. Overlooking shit. the city, the thirty-something floor, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Sick, sick. Hey, this That's morning. what he's interested in. <laughs> <laughs> What's the living room like? What did it smell like? <laughs> <laughs> Jay been balling for a long time. Just want to know what it was in those six. That's all. <laughs> Yeah. So what were you going through personally as you were doing this album? Because mm -hmm. actually I did, I co-hosted Good Day New York with Rosanna yeah. Scotto for a day. And yeah. shockingly enough, Ro Timmy was a guest, which I was excited that was about. Dope. That was dope. Um, so you said that you're single now. Yeah. So what were you going through in your mind, in your headspace while you were doing this album? Um, I was actually able to really just lock in, man, and like just think about all the experiences that I had. Like last year I had a, a relationship that was a growing space for me. That was the first time, like my whole life I spent most of my relationships on doing long distance. Mm -hmm. so it was the first time that somebody had actually like lived with me for a little bit. So How was that? I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved it because it was the first time I was able to be like, yo, like let's, you can stay as long as you want. You don't have to leave in two days. Like, you know what I mean? You so were was, shacking up playing house? Bro, it was a great feeling. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, it was a great, I didn't expect to like it, but it was just like, it, was, it just felt cool just to have somebody there, you know? So then we went our separate ways. So it was just like, all right, this is good music. You Did know? you feel heartbroken? At the time, yeah, because it was the first time I actually, like, cared. Like, mm -hmm. I really did care because, you know, it was the first time I said, all right, let me actually do this for real. Let me just really try this. And so when you didn't, when it doesn't work, yeah, it just hit hard. What made you want a woman to live with you? Uh, I think because I never, it was a new experience. Mm -hmm. I never experienced it before. So having someone just to literally help me focus, because everything was on the road, this and this, you having fun, city to city, you know, wilding out. Mm -hmm. But then when you have a center, like, when you're able to just have somebody, like, Help you focus. That was that was the That's a big deal though. Y'all sharing yeah. the toilet? Basically. You know what I'm saying? Like you just don't <laughs> yeah. split with somebody like that. Yeah, bro. It was weird. It was at first it was like, okay, what am I how long is this gonna last? But then it became, oh, I gotta go to do this movie. Are you coming? Mm -hmm. Cool. I gotta go to the studio. Are you coming? So she had her own thing, but it was cool that she was able to just pick up and go whenever I had to go. Did you think he was gonna marry her? Dude, that's a dead. I thought it was gonna last for a while. I didn't know about marriage yet, but I thought it was gonna last for a while. What would your mother say? Hey, my mama was, um, she was not happy about the situation. <laughs> no. it, was, it was one of those things that she said, wrote to me, and it's, it's, I don't think this one. But this she, one. oh, so she didn't like her. She was just, she, uh, mom's intuition is always right, though, mm -hmm. so she was like, there's something off. What there's happened? Something. It was just the wrong, the wrong time, wrong time, and you know, she was going through a lot personally, and mm -hmm. I didn't have the actual time to invest in that part of it. Mm -hmm. And so it was just, it was just, it was just difficult. Okay. Yeah. Were you comfortable enough? Like, were you okay to use the bathroom? <laughs> like, yeah. sit on the toilet. You shit in front talk? of her. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. And she could do that in front of you too. Yeah, but she didn't really do that too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all ain't really broken up then. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know it's real. Yeah, if y'all shit, you you shit in front of her, y'all ain't really broken up. <laughs> you can't just walk away from a girl that's all that. Okay? Yeah, I know, I know, dog. I know, I know. So you are looking forward to another relationship though because I know it's, sure. it's really different when you go from living with somebody and then mm -hmm. now you're not and you miss some of those things yeah 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 that I, come with 
I think I think because my mentality is like, man, just be great, bro. Like everything else is gonna come. Women gonna come. Money's gonna come if you just put the work in. So having the stability of a good woman, like, and I, my parents are still together for four years. Wow. You know? So like seeing that, you see the definition of like what love is and like how important it is to have like a best friend you stay with. So like I know how powerful it is when you find somebody dope. I love this song that you start the album off with too. Uh, Legend. Besides Love Rhythm, I think that might be my favorite one. I thought it was Legend. really sweet. Yeah. It's so who is that about? Just every woman, man. Like mm-hmm. I'm name. If you listen to Legend, it's li- literally listing every woman and how important it is, and like waking up and telling them, "Yo, just understand it. You're a legend." You know, not enough people tell women that yo, you're legendary. You know, so you've affected me in a legendary way. So it's a cool way of saying I love you and just on some cool on some cool tips. How, does you, how do you expect your woman to be? Is you, do you want her to be submissive, or is it? Oh, it's a you, balance. You're African because it's patriarchy, right? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's I roles. Mean, I mean, yeah, it's 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 not necessarily roles. It's just like having a woman to fill in the gaps of what I lack. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that. You be strong in the things that I'm not good at, and I'll be strong in the things that you're you know you're not good at. So like, if if you see I'm on set and then I'm in the studio and then I'm doing this and I'm tired at home, I'd hope that you help cook for me. You know what I'm saying? It's not mm-hmm. necessarily like your requirement, but it's like, oh, he's working hard. I take care of him. You know, or that, order that some great thing. food that she knows you like. Yeah. <laughs> or some work. Yes, I want, you got some curry chicken and rice waiting for me. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So it's all about, it's all about just definitely just a partnership, man. Were you playing the music on set? Yeah, yeah. I played the music on set. Amari made a video to it. That was yeah, kinda, I saw that, that. that went kind of viral. I saw Tori dancing at her birthday party yeah, to Love Rhythm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool, man. Just to have the support of your friends and you know, Amari was like, "Look, bro, like if you really take this seriously, you could definitely be like the new Harry Belafonte." Mm-hmm. And I took that very seriously because you know how Tess Amari is. So he he he's, he goes and he 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 speaks from a place of passion. So. I feel like I want to do. I want to be the new Renaissance man and and, and carry that weight. But you know the thing with you know your mom said Bob Marley, uh, Omari said Harry Belafonte. Yeah. Those brothers are activists. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they're bigger than their music. Yeah. You know. I think for me, is basically making my culture really, really relevant and being and and the coolest thing is when someone said, "Hey, what's up, Timmy? Oh my God! Yo, I'm I'm African. I'm African." I'm Nigerian, you know, and that pride that people are taking in that is cool because I remember being in high school and they was like, oh, African booty scratcher, or you fresh off the boat, or this, and it was, they would play being Mm -hmm. African or Haitian Mm -hmm. or Jamaican. So like now to see that it's relevant and like, yo, uh, Lorenz came up to me, Lorenz came up to me, he was like, hey bro, you know, so I'm 65% Nigerian, Yoruba (laughs) bro, so teach me about my culture, man. Makes me some, you know, okra soup. And it was like, Wow, the fact that people are trying to know where they're from is is really special. I think just, Black Panther had a lot to do with that. I think so too. Yeah, and just I see so, so many too. people traveling there now too. Yeah, it feels like that's the trip now. That's like the everybody trip. wants to go to Nigeria. Nigeria. They yeah. want to go to South Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna bring. New, I'm gonna spend New Year's in Nigeria. Oh, bro, I'll be out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I'm gonna spend New I saw Year's. Brisha and Notori and all yeah, of them were there last there. year. They didn't want to come back. I know. Yeah, they I said heard. It was crazy. They went for New Year's. They went for New Year's, Christmas to New Year's. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for like. 12 days when we go on a holiday break. Yep. You should, because you start off right before Christmas, end off, and then if you want, you could probably even go to Ghana, because it's right there, too. And Ghana's a, another whole vibe, too. I just got to figure out the housing situation, because I'm so used to going out and like renting houses and stuff like that. No, nah, I, I don't do that. Yeah, you get a hotel, right? Yeah, get a hotel. Get a, hotel. Yeah, yeah, get a luxury, yeah, yeah. luxury hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, Nigeria, the way Nigeria's set up is like one block, so the, the house that you get will be in a dope block, but then right in there is like the village. You know? Got you, got so you. So you don't know, just be careful. Mm-hmm. Now, have you started to think about life after power? Oh yeah, it's, it's already happening. You know, that's why we released it. You know, that's why we released Walk with Me now. And then um, I got into executive producing as well. So okay, uh, I have a movie coming out called Single Holic that I that I executive produced, um, starring myself, Erica Ash, Stephen Bishop, Tyson Beckford. So. Oh, Erica Ash. She yeah. was on the... Um, Survivor's Remorse. Yes, I loved her on that. Yeah, yeah. So we put together a, a dope film, man, that um that Netflix or I think... um uh, Well, in talks with some other people. So like by, by the top of next year, we'll have it out. But I wanted to... St- like Basically, I want to do everything, mm-hmm. you know? And so executive produce, be an artist, be a musician, be you know an entrepreneur, and, and, and get into real estate. So 
That's kind of where it's at. What's happening with sexy Nigerian butterscotch? So, oh, what ladies, is sexy butterscotch ladies, ladies, Nigerian? Uh, no, sexy Nigerian butterscotch, and <laughs> you know, like it's it's one of those things, man. Like I had to, I had to figure out how people could see my personality in real life mm-hmm. while the show was so heavy. And at the time, like I was just creating the music, I was creating Walk with Me, so there's nothing musically I could put out at the time. So I was like, how can I show that I'm not Dre? I'm not this. So strategically, it was just like, let me just make up this character. Mm-hmm. And when I did it, Shade Room picked it up, Fifty picked it up, <laughs> uh, Wiz Khalifa, Snoop. So you got to do more with it. I know, I know. That's why, I'm th- but people are submitting like movie scripts for it. And I'm everything. saying you yeah. have to do more. I know. I just don't want to oversaturate it. So that's why I do like once every two months, once every month. So. Are, are you involved in any of the power spinoffs? Uh, we got to see, brother. Stop trying to get um, exclusive information. <laughs> he almost slipped out. Yeah, I did for a second. I was like, wait. Uh, it's a few of them, though, right? Yeah, it's a couple things going on. I guess on. it okay. depends on if you live through this season. And you know, you just got to tune in and see what's going on. <laughs> hey, didn't you take a picture with somebody and get her pregnant? That, how crazy is that, bro? Erica yeah. Dixon. Yes. So basically, that story. So Most of you done got mad people pregnant on social media. <laughs> so that story. So basically... <laughs> I literally met her five minutes before that picture. No. So someone was like, yo, um, uh, Erica wants me. So I didn't know who who Erica was at the Mm -hmm. time. So we took the picture and literally that was it. So So you never met her again? I never met her again. So you got her pregnant right then? Apparently. Nigerians, boy. (laughs) Nigerian (laughs) butterscotch. It's the butterscotch effect. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, oh, okay, well, shit, I got twins. But it was just funny because... I never spoke to her after that. I right. didn't know who she was. It was like a, like literally taking a picture with someone, <laughs> and that was literally it. How do rumors like that impact the person that it's happening to? Like it's no, mm-hmm. it's not even close to being real. Yeah, not even close to being true. Yeah. What happens in your life? Do your phone ring crazy? Phone rings crazy, like crazy, crazy. I remember. Um, so I was talking to someone at the time, <laughs> and she was the first one to call me. Like, so why didn't you tell was. me <laughs> that she was getting somebody pregnant? And it was like, what? <laughs> and so I saw it, and then it was just like, yo, this is not true. You know what I mean? So well, she believed it, but it was just how impactful. Like, it could really mess up a relationship. A relationship, yeah. and, you know, if you don't have any strength in anything. So it was just like that, like you know. But it it, it affects you because. It shows how finicky the internet is. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, if somebody says, oh, something, somebody slapped this person, it's like, you see it and it's, it's it add to something else. But yeah, the I fact heard you that, slapped Envy and that's why he didn't show up. I probably did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's how, that's how, that's how finicky the, pro, you know, the, the, the situation is. But it's kind of sad, man. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because you can't really live anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I feel like it you're must have been bubble. hard for you to even post your real girlfriend yeah, on social was media because yeah. I was like, "What? Real Timmy got a girl?" Yeah, man, that was crazy. I, I, was, <laughs> I was in a different place. <laughs> you never do that again. <laughs> again. <laughs> I was like, "He's in love, love." No, okay, that, yeah. that's the young lady you was living with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Because we again. never seen you do that. Uh, uh-uh, uh, I was tripping, bro. <laughs> I mean, I you, did, tripping. you did shit in front of her, so I can understand. Hey, that. You know, it was after that 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 that, that time I did. Yeah. Yeah. So you feel like you wouldn't do that again? Nah, because you, I feel like you should protect things that really matter to you in 2019. Yes. Like this year, this this type of you know, this type of environment wants to break down everything. Like mm-hmm. they don't like anything. You know what I mean? They want to hate it before they love it, and they're mad that they love it. You know, so that's kind of the where the world we're in. So you got to protect what's you know what you actually value. You know that's so interesting you say that because I always say that's why Beyonce wins because she takes away people's expectations. Yeah. Like when you just put an album out, yeah, and people don't get a chance to look at the cover. Oh, this is whack. You yeah. didn't even listen to you it yet. Listen to it. Oh, I don't like this. Like yeah. just give it to them. No expectations. No expectations. Boom. Now it's just they got to deal with whatever you gave. Them. Exactly. And that's kind of that's kind of the way we 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 went about it. We kind of get gave a heads up, but like I wanted people to hear it before they see see me mm-hmm. in this one because. If you do watch Power, if this and this and this, I, that's why Walk With Me for me was one of those things where it's like, I want the music to speak. So forget everything about Power, forget everything about movie, forget about this. It's just focus on this and walk with me through this journey. And that's why it's like, let the music speak for itself. Well, you did a great job. Thank you. It's an amazing AP and Thank EP you. and everybody has to listen to it. Yeah, Thank I like you. I like Decisions and Love Rhythm. Hey, my brother. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Well, it's Ro Timmy. Uh, walk With Me is out right now. Thank you for coming. Give me your Instagrams and Twitters and all that yes, stuff. As yes. if you need more followers. <laughs> Always need followers. Uh, Instagram, Ro Timmy Music. Uh, Twitter, Ro Timmy. And May 24th. What is Kenny talking about? Kenny telling you to say something. What? Oh, shoot. 
I just got my name, just got my name on Instagram. So it's Ro Timmy, R O T I M I on Instagram. Who is this other Ro Timmy? No, so I had this, basically, I, I had Ro Timmy music and a bot had Ro Timmy. Ah, they so, got you. So, yeah, so we went in there and got Are there other Ro Timmy's? In real life? Yeah. I don't know anybody else so. named Ro Timmy. Yeah, there has to be. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, yeah, thousands. Of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if that was a popular name. Yeah, yeah. But May 24th, Man, like, thank God, like, this this project Welcome Me is out, man, and I'm just so, super excited, and, and you guys are going to love pretty much every song on there, for sure. All right, congratulations. Are we going to be angry at you this season on Power? You know, it's going to be a roller coaster, but you're going to learn a lot more about Dre. You're going to really? learn, you, yeah, you're going to learn, like, the I person. know you have a kid, right? Yeah, so you're going to, the cool thing is... Was it is, Erica Dixon's? Oh, wow. No, Jesus. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the cool thing about it is that it get you get to see who... Dre is as a father and it makes you like if it make you say if I was in his position what would I do mm -hmm. and that's the first time people get to self reflect and it was the first time like I had to cry on crank on camera and all type of stuff. so vulnerability as an actor is like an all time hottest and year. it's 15 episodes right and it's 15 episodes that's good because we really didn't know anything about you you didn't you just saw what he did but right. now you're gonna realize why he did does what he does and it's, it's pretty y'all shot him all already uh, well, yeah, we're, work, we're still working on it. Wow. What episode did you die in? Anyway, so thank you guys for having me. <laughs> Trying to get me fired, He's bro. still working. <laughs> <laughs> He's been traveling, so he hasn't been on set lately. <laughs> right, it's real Timmy. It's The Breakfast Club. <laughs> 